Oh, it's, it's great. Um, I was happy with the, the transition the next day of, after the, the cello render fight. I just knew that, um, you know, coming up 40 years old at the time, um, I'd give my all. I'd give my all in the short space of time that I had. And that fight took it out of me. I would say the, the, the Jermaine Smile fight, which was the English title before, I think I have to look at the, the dynamics of everything and being that it was a year later as well than when I won uh, cello for the Southern Area title, it, it, I just wasn't active enough in that, in that time. And obviously I'm getting older and older. Not that age is an excuse, but for me and myself with the 18 years playing professional football and then I'm obviously just over four years um, boxing, to reach the levels I did in, in the short space of time, um, I can't really complain. So I'm happy with uh, the transition and, and retirement. It's nice being able to eat what I want as well. I know you just mentioned it, and we can't not mention it because it mm. goes down with everyone who was there as one of the best nights they've seen. Talk to me about the channel and the fight. Have you watched it back? What do you think when you watch it back? I haven't, I haven't watched the whole fight back yet, but I've seen some of the fight, uh, being that it was shot by my documentary team. Um, I can honestly say it's, it's, it's epic. It's like, it's really, but emotional at the same time, because there, it, was, it, was, it was a gripping fight in itself, very like, you know, toe to toe and, you know, I sort of nearly had him out of there in round three. Referee should have stopped it, but didn't. Life goes on, do you know what I mean? Um, and Cello being Cello, He's a tough man. He, he, he come back in a way where, you know, it, it was his time. He, he wanted, he needed it. He needed it for his career, and he produced. And um, unfortunately, as it goes down as as a as a knockout, he totally deserves that win. Um, and the, the fight is unbelievable. When it, when it's actually uh, sort of finished um, and the film's finished, which I'm doing, then uh, then you'll see that the. the you know, the whole journey and what it's all about. And it's, it's emotional because obviously the way, you know, I kind of lost, but I kind of didn't really lose. It was kind of like that kind of story. So we, you're obviously a personal trainer and you do that in your spare time, but now you are a pro coach, which yeah. is amazing. So talk to me about that decision, the process behind it and what, what's happening there. Um, I, do you know what, it's just to stay in boxing, just the, the passion I have for, for boxing in itself, obviously. Um, I, I felt that I could offer so much. After I retired, I had been helping a few other sort of pro boxers, just, you know, just helping out. And I really enjoyed that um, position of, of, you know, them sort of looking to me for advice and, and guidance. Um, and I, I'm a very giving person, so I, I believe that I've got a lot to offer over the years of, of just being an athlete. Um, and uh, they can they'll definitely be fit, I know that. And I've got my first boxer, um, He's going to be coming in um, as a light middle now, uh, John Hardin. Um, he's six and zero, and you know we, we fight fifteenth of September. We just signed a promotional management deal with Steve Goodwin, who is my old, um, you know, manager and, and promotion uh, promoter. And you know I'm I'm excited for his journey. I, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing um, a fighter do well. Me being the other side of it, but still kind of winning. Uh, with him and I, I'd like to see them achieve. So giving that guidance is, is great. The coaching, um, I, got, I, I spoke to Darren Barker about 12 times free. Um, and he, you know, for probably about eight months ago now, he, he got me to come down. I've done a few classes and uh, you know what? I've never really sort of looked back. I love the setup. The gym is, 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 is a great uh, place, fantastic coaches. Um, it's a real nice, happy environment. So. Um, it's perfect for me because it's, it's only around the corner and um, yeah, I, I enjoy coaching. I, I, I like seeing people achieve and just feeling good about themselves. It's, it's important in life. With the pro licence, obviously people that don't know, is it quite an extensive exam? Which, like... It's a couple of days, um, of course. Uh, you know, you do your first aid in that and a few bits and bobs that, you know, you have to kind of read certain things. So I wouldn't say it was... Uh, ridiculously hard but it's it's time and effort and you have to kind of know i guess what, what you're doing to some extent so yeah it was it was it was worth it was worth doing i'm glad i did it um it was well put together by the board and yeah just glad it's out of the way because i'm not really an exam person is 
coaching for you a kind of way to keep your fire burning, whereas obviously you've not had to completely let go of boxing. Mm. Is it your way of keeping obviously the family tradition as well as your passion? Um, I don't. I, I think you know. Obviously, I'm not competing anymore, but I definitely would say to keep within the industry because I love boxing. I mean, I, I mean, everyone could say, well, why have you not gone and done sort of football coaching? But boxing has always been my passion, so I don't watch loads of football, so I was never really going to go down the coaching route. But, you know, when I was playing, I was always watching boxing, always at the big fights, just loved boxing. So I can see where the transition has been going into coaching for boxing. Um, t my son is about to have a, a fight um, in October, his first one, don't want him to fight, bit upset about it, not training him, will help him, but won't be in his corner or nothing. Just, uh, I'm too emotionally attached, yeah. I'm too emotionally weak to, um, to, you know, if my son gets hurt or like, you know, and I'm, I'm in his corner, I'm, I, I know me as a person and I can't really deal with that. Does that um, give you a new my, my dad is my best friend. Um, I think spiritually, the connection me and my dad had, you know, I, I kind of knew what he was feeling, especially when I collapsed in that last round. Uh, you know, he's probably, he's probably scared a lot of people. Um, but that's what exhaustion does, you know, when you're sort of struggling to make weight and, you know, you just, you know, if you don't do the, the things that you're supposed to do and you're sort of trying to make it in ways you shouldn't, then, you know, that's when you get, problems and I think that's what we was initially sort of scared of because we knew the last couple of fights was a bit like this is becoming a bit hard you know what I mean just to try and make that weight I mean I would have loved to have gone up to like light heavy but I'm not 25 years old so we just had to look at the whole structure and and um you know process of everything so we're happy we're, it was Did good. you feel it in your so silly question your body was telling you no more than your mind in the build-up to your retirement? Was, was it your body saying absolutely not? Yeah, my body just had enough. Um, I never, I never uh, just kind of give, give up. I'm not one to give up like that. Um, for me to collapse, just knowing, like, I remember watching it and I actually, like, although, you know, Cello was sort of really sort of giving it to me, he, he, you know, he really sort of coming all out. It wasn't his punches that were not necessarily hurting me. It was just that my mind was saying, like, I actually can't fight back. Like, I haven't got enough to fight back. Um, and that's where just kind of just everything just left me. So when I was like lying, lying, lying down, like covering my face, like my mind was saying, Leon, like, Leon, like, like, I was talking to myself and I was just like, I can't get up. Like, I, I was actually, I remember saying to myself, I actually can't get up. I'm so tired. And that was it. And it was like round nine, like one round left. So, that's the way it goes, man. Like, Cello, you know, I hope he goes on to, he's got a big fight coming up and English title eliminator. I really hope he uh, goes on to even uh, step up again because, you know, he's, he was, um, I respect him a lot because he, he came to, and he didn't have, he had, he had a lot of time, he didn't have a lot of time either. So it was a short notice, but he done what he had to do. With John Hardy Jr. Mm. What does he like to work with? He's a nice kid, very hard working, listens to what I say, um, doesn't take the best pictures, <laughs> but, but we're working on that. Doesn't do the best videos, but we're working on that. So I'm working on these little things, but no, he, he's, a, he's um, a real, not the biggest puncher in the world, but we're, again, we're, we're, we're building up to, 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 you know, to make him hit a lot harder than he does. Very sharp, very sharp, very tidy in what he does. I think he's, you know, he's, he's, he'd be all right, especially with like me on board now. It'd be suit, it'd be fit number one, of, of you know, first and foremost. Um, and it, it'll have a bit more of a structure because a lot of these kids are just coming through, and they're, you know, they're training by themselves all the time, and there's no one to sort of guide them properly. And you know, every so often a little bit of pads, and it's just like that's you ready to fight. And then also that's, you know, dealing with tickets and dealing with everything that comes with boxing, which is a stress in itself, is it's sometimes hard work for, for kids that are just trying to break through. But he's got some good people around him. Dillian White has been fantastic. Um, you know, he's been 
uh, is brought him on, on board as well in, in certain camps, especially for the last fight. You know, he walked out holding his belt. Those little things give fighters like that inspiration to want to, you know, try and achieve more. So that's why, um, you know, I hold a lot of respect for Dillian for, for giving him that time and even trying to bring him through the door a little bit um, to, you know, to try and get him on a matchroom show as an undercard or whatever, maybe on the next Dillian White show. So be it. Either way, we'll, we'll be ready. So John's obviously done that six times in the ring, but it's your debut in the corner. And yeah. You get a minute now instead of three. Exactly. Tell me what that's going to be like. Are you nervous? Have you thought about it? Have you... No, I don't, it's not. I'm not about being nervous. Um, I just feel like uh, this is this is where I, I, I become a coach. It's, it's where I I um, give all my guidance and, and experience and education over to John. The one thing I know is is um, I've I've sat where he's sitting. So after each round, I know what he's going through. I know what he's feeling. And I can try and engage with him as best I can. So there's a spiritual connection there, where which my dad had with me. He knew when I used to come back and I used to sit down, and he looked me in my eyes and he knew it happened in the cello fight where I had nothing left. I'm going into reserved. So you need you need something, some kind of call in there. You need to know your your fighters and what's to, you know what to bring the best out of them is going to do. Have you received any tips from your dad? going into your coaching journey or do you just feel like you kind of know what the deal is? Yeah, I think I kind of know um, just watching and observing many different um, trainers, whether it be like Dave Coldwell, you know, Adam Booth, like I'm, I'm, I've been observing them all um, and even to the point of like I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go down and spend time with, with Adam Booth just for my own studying, just, just to, and he said, great, come down and um, just watch you do what you do with your fighters and just trying to learn. So I'm, I'm all about learning. I'm not, I'm not coming in to be a coach to say I'm, I'm going to be the best, but I'm going to be the best Leo McKenzie. Uh, just as, as you see me in football, as you see me in, in, when I was fighting, it'd be the same principle as I'm coaching. Just the next stage. Just another chapter, yeah. What's it going to be like watching the action through the rope? Because you're so used to being part of it. That it's going to be yeah, I've had, I've had a couple of situations where I've, I've obviously watched John as well a couple of times. I think I sat by you one time. And I can kind of a little bit, I can be quite vocal. Um, where I guess I feel like I'm in there sometimes. So I want to kind of work on that a little bit more and be a little bit more composed and try not to like emotions come out all in the round. And then you're like, you know, by the time they come back to the corner, you're like, <sighs> Do you know what I mean? So I just need to like be a little bit more composed in, in that and then um, it will be alright. Just touching it up now, talking yeah. about the film, what stage is that at? Because you know it's coming. Yeah, uh, it's quite political because 90% done, but um, still got a little bit more to film. Um, still a little bit more investment to go into the film because lots of things need to be paid for, like music and archive stuff and just the things that you think like were at really. I think a clip of me when I was little to jump in the ring when my dad won the British title again, um, I think ITV like wanted like stupid money for it. Do you know what I mean? So just these little things we are just trying to put together, but it, it's, it's going to happen. So it's a, it's a massive film, massive. Yeah, so LAPS stands for Life After Professional Sport. So uh, LAPS approached me, um, two partners. I bought shares into this company because I believed in it. So I bought my own shares into it just for the simple fact of what it gives back and how it educates, you know, the kids coming through no matter what industry. So at, at this precise moment in time, we're working on the premiership um, and the kids are scholarship and the youth kind of kids that are coming through um, who are not pro yet. So it's me going into to clubs, I'm putting on a workshop along with my partners, um, talking about, you know, life after. You know, what other talents do they have? What, you know, what other kind of things are they interested in? Getting their minds into different areas and being able to focus on, you know, you know if this does end, do you know what I mean? Whether that be through injury, life circumstances or whatever it is, health reasons, who, who knows what happens tomorrow, but you know, like myself, I went through like the injuries and it was, it was terrible. Um, and it put my mind in a very vulnerable position when I was going through all these injuries, because now uh, the love that I had for football was getting taken away from me, so I didn't have control of that. Um, so it's just teaching them 
um, the fundamentals of, of saying, look, you know, all this time that you've got, when you do go home or you finish training, start putting your mind into other areas and look at other avenues where it's only going to help you moving forward for your future. I had a massive meeting with the Boxing Board of Control with LAPS as well. Um, and the Boxing Board of Control are going to be coming along to one of my workshops with the view to try and do something for boxing. So I'm going to try and incorporate that because uh, I sat down with them and I laid everything down and there's nothing for boxing. So one of my first uh, protocols was to do that. So we got the meeting set up um, and they're in, they're in the process of, of partnering up together and, and trying to do some stuff and offer some things for, for professional boxers uh, during and retirement. Amazing. So you've been, obviously been always a big character saying that because you've lived it as well in mental health but do you think that we're in a much better state than we were two or three years ago do you think anything's moved on do you think the stigma's changed at all i think i think i think i think things are improving but we're no in no way shape or form um in a position where we can sort of sit back and say yeah everything's great now because it's not and i think the government bodies the, the the industries can keep pushing and keep putting in money, keep putting money into areas where it's only going to save lives. In the end, it's all well and good acting after someone takes their life, or something bad happens, or someone goes into a, uh, you know, a mental hospital, or whatever you want to call it, um, and then we want to act. But let's just try and prevent rather than do it, dealing with things after. Since your retirement, has there been any moment that you want to pull the gloves back on? Yes. Still? There'll always be that kind of, oh, I think I can do it. So the only time I change my mind is when I spotted with Anthony Yard. <laughs> I saw your Snapchat actually. Yeah. Your <laughs> what was that? Well, I've done, sort of done six rounds in and out. In and out. Um, but for, some, for whatever reason, he just forgot who I was in the last round of round six yeah. and totally went to town on me. Yeah. So I was a little bit disappointed with that because I was like, in my head, I'm like looking at him and I'm stepping back and I'm stepping back and I'm stepping back. And in my head, I'm like, Ants, like, I've, come, I've come to help you out, mate. I'm 40 years old <laughs> and retired. Give me a yard. <laughs> nah, he's a proper apologetic, apologetic after. Um, I, I, love, I just love, love. I, I'm going to stop sparring now. Um, just for the simple reason, uh, just, you know, things can happen. And, and, you know, I've got beautiful babies. You know, my fiance has been, please stop it. You know what I mean? I just love it so much. So I'm going to stop sparring with him. Um, and I sparred. I've done two rounds with Joshua Bratzi last week. Again, this is, what, this is why I'm happy to retire. <laughs> this is why I'm happy to retire because let me tell you something now, between them both, I can't wait to see that fight, right? You know, if and when it happens. But I'll tell you something now, Joshua Barazzi, he's not, he's spiteful, naturally spiteful. And he wasn't even, he was just going through the motions. Now I wasn't sort of, you know, I wasn't trying to sort of, I wasn't trying to sort of take his head off or anything, but you know, I was sort of catching him a little bit. And then he just went to town a little bit again, like they all, they all do at that level. And, and then I was like in a situation of, okay. And he hit me with a good body shot. And I ain't been in the gym ever. So I was like, could take a knee for this one, but <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather take a, a deep breath instead. So I sort of showed him the deep breath. I said like, oh God, mate, not another one. So, um, but he, and he, he said, sorry, right in the ring. I said, no, don't be sorry, but just don't do it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all, it's all good. No, some, some real good, exciting fights, some real, Good future prospects coming through, man. Cheesy, cheesy question to kind of summarise it all. You're a footballer, you're now a coach, but what did being a boxer and lacing up your gloves teach you? Boxing taught me how to fight on just literally in life. Um, yeah. not, well, not everyone knows this, but when I turned professional at 35 years old and I jumped into a professional boxing ring, I was in a position where I'd lost everything in my life. I, I, didn't, I wasn't, didn't know what to do. So it was me literally fighting back in life, but no one knew that because all you saw was the tag as in professional footballer, now professional boxer. Oh, what's he trying to do here? But what people didn't realise is that it's probably one of the hardest years, that year of turning professional was one of the hardest years of my life. Like full stop. Um, and, I've, and I've gone through some very sad tragedies before that. 
But that year was, was a, a massive, like, oh, to actually get in what it meant to me and my family at that particular time and to go on to fight for, you know, what I fought for, you know, like, that's why, that, 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 that's why it wasn't, it didn't just come down to me just jumping into the ring. It came down to me just fighting back in life. Otherwise, I, w I probably wouldn't be here today. That's the, that's real, that's the re real, realistic of this conversation, do you know what I mean? That's, that's where I was at, like. So, I feel privileged to be interviewing you that you are here. Yeah, yeah, of course. You're an amazing, amazing man. What does mm. the future hold for you from here on now? Just to, what, just, what, what's the future for Leon McKenzie? Just to uh, continue eating, but not too much. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy that, enjoy retirement, see my babies, just, uh, you know, aspire to be whatever they want. And, and yeah, they, um, yeah, just, 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 just to do the best I can as, as, a, as a daddy. Um, be a better husband than previous times I've been on, um, and just just try and be a, just try and be a better person than I've been. Do you know what I mean? That's it. Good luck.